Okay, let's look at some good practices for building forms with React. How we should handle them in script, how we should handle them in JSX. So we'll start with this simple form. Two fields, they're both text fields. Two inputs, two labels, and a button. Simple enough. No errors rendering here. We'll jump into the code. And you can see that I am in my constructor for this component. Well, let's go back up to the top. Inside the app, I've got a div and I'm rendering my component. I have two props, name and domain. So I'm passing in a couple of strings just for the hell of it. These two values are going to come down inside of this.props. I'll be able to go this.props.name, this.props.domain, and then use those values inside my form. So in my constructor, I am creating the initial values for my state object, and I'm going to get name and domain from props. Pass those in. This is going to give me state.name and state.domain, and I can use that down inside of my form. I've got a fragment, a couple of headings, here's my form element, three paragraph tags. The first two have a label and an input, the last one's got the button. Pretty simple. I have a value attribute added to my input element, and I'm using this.state.name, so I'm getting it out of state to display it here, and as well for the domain. You'll notice I haven't given an ID or a class name to these things. Class name would be for CSS, but ID, I'm not bothering to do anything with that. I'm not giving it a name attribute either. The reason for that is with React, it's a single page application. Everything's happening in the same place, and we're just using state and props to pass information around. We're re-rendering components. We're showing and hiding things. If I actually wanted to update something, then I would write some code that sent this data to the server to be saved. I'm going to be using events in React, these synthetic events, on change for my inputs. I can use on click for my buttons. I can use on submit for my form element. That's going to tie into these functions right here. So I've created a bunch of methods inside of my component, one called submit, one called click, one for update name, one for update domain. The click listener, I'm actually not going to be using this on click one. I have it here just to show you that I can, and you know, I could come in here and add a console.log. I'm going to add my ev prevent default. So my event object that's being passed automatically by React up to this method, I'm going to call prevent default. So I don't want the function to, or this rather form, to try and submit. If I don't do this, when I click, so let's comment this out. When I submit my page, what's going to happen is I'm actually going to be re-rendering the page. You can see this re-rendered. I got the question mark that appeared here. So here we are. I'll re reload the page. When I click the update button, if you watch up here and you watch over here, you'll see this reload and you'll see the question mark come up here because I have actually reloaded the page. I don't want that to happen. So we say ev prevent default. Reload it without the question mark, without the query string, click the update, nothing happens. So if you did have a listener on your button and you wanted to do something, make sure that you're doing ev prevent default. Now, same thing in the submit. If I put it inside the on submit right here, I'm calling the submit method from the form. This will do the same thing, it'll prevent it. And this is really where we're going to put our code. So this code runs for the form on submit event. We can run other tasks, but this isn't where we're going to handle the form data. We're going to handle it inside the submit. All right, so we've added ev prevent default to the submit method. I come back in here, I click the button again. Nothing happens. This doesn't reload. The page doesn't reload because my ev prevent default inside the, the submit method, this is preventing the form and the page from reloading. So that's a good thing. Now, if you've watched my video on refs, you understand that from one element, I can get access to another one by creating a ref, but I don't want to have to do that for everything. 
So it's sort of breaks the golden rule of React, which is try to avoid touching the DOM at all costs. So I don't want to be making a ref inside of here so I can reference it and get at the values. I can add an on change event. So as people are making changes to these elements, I can grab the data right at that point. As they've typed that one thing and then they go to the next element, I can do some data validation. I can upload it. I can do whatever I want to just this value. Now, side note here, I'm using value to set a value inside the element. Now, if I don't have an on change handler, if I've used value, so I'll remove this from the first one from the username. My component is re-rendering now. We go back and I've got an error. All I did was go to this first input and I've removed the on change event. The error that I get, you provided a value to a form field without an on change handler. This will render a read only field. So because I used value and I put something in there, this I can't change now. If I click in here and I type n space, I'm typing a whole bunch of stuff. Nothing's coming up. I've turned this into a read only field because I don't have an on change handler. If I want to be able to change it without an on change handler, I need to come in here and use default value instead of value. If I do that, default value, there we go, it's re rendering. This is now just the value when the page first loads. I can now type as much as I want. I don't want to do that. I do want to make it tied to the rest of my page. So I am going to use value and I'm going to use an on change method. So this dot update name, here's the method. Inside of here, I'm going to take the value and I'm going to update state. I'm going to update state right here. This is rendering state.name. So when you click here, if I update state.name, that will re-render this component. So it does keep this component in sync with state. So let's do that. I'll say let name equal ev.target. That is my input. ev is the event. ev.target is this input down here. And I want to get its value. So whatever there's currently typed inside there, that's the name. And I'm going to update state. The thing inside of state that I'm updating is called name as well. So we can just say this dot set state name. That's going to be the same as doing this name colon name. So let's drill down here and highlight our input element. There we go. Value is Steve. Inside of component in state, name is Steve. So let's make it Steven. There we go. I updated Steven and the value inside the input changed to Steven. Perfect. That's what we want to do. And we're going to repeat this inside the domain, the, the update domain method. So instead of name, it's domain. There we go. So fred.com. And there is fred.com has been updated inside of state. Perfect. Now, when the person calls submit, when they click the button, that's going to trigger the on submit method, or rather the on submit synthetic event, which will trigger our submit method up here. And this would be send the data to the server or whatever, whatever you want to do. The data is up to date inside of this dot state. That's all of our data. We have changed this. We saw that inside the React Dev Tools. This is where I've got the most current state. I don't have to go back to these elements. I don't have to go into here and get the value of this, then into here, get the value of this. I don't have to create refs so that I can get to those values. I've saved the updated information in state, which is local to my component.
So inside of here, do data validation. This is where I would check. Inside of here, I would do data validation. And since it's only on one field, I'm only doing it on this one or this one, because they're unique methods, I can, from here, do validation that is unique to the domain or unique to the name. And there we have it. That's how forms work and react. I type a bunch of stuff. Type a bunch of things. When I click update, that's when the submit method runs. And that's when I can take that data and send it somewhere or save it someplace, whether it's in local storage or through Ajax, anything I want. I will be doing other videos on local storage and on Ajax calls from React. But for now, if you understand what we're doing here with these event listeners, you're right on. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.